Hello, this is Domenico Composto with Easynomics, and today we're going to look at a macroeconomic model, the Keynesian model, and uh, we will create and eliminate a recessionary gap. The applied example will be this article, a recent article, uh, regarding the impact of the COVID pandemic on the national economy of Spain. The title states that Spain's economy will shrink, it will contract by more than most other developed nations in 2020. This is according to the International Monetary Fund. Uh, and I can imagine that many students will have macro internal assessments regarding the impact of COVID on national economies. This is just one example of that. The subtitle states that as a result of the coronavirus crisis output, production is expected to decline by 12.8% of GDP, which unfortunately is an unprecedented figure that is worse than in any other advanced country. So this is a pretty dire situation uh, for Spain and for so many other nations. So let's apply a model to understand this. So here we have our Keynesian model. We've seen in the previous two videos that the Keynesian model has a horizontal section, which we call section one. In this part, the price level does not fall, and we'll label that PL1. And the price level does not fall due to labor contracts, minimum wage legislation, worker or union resistance to wage cuts, and even employers' resistance to cutting wages because they don't want to demoralize their, their workforce and reduce productivity. So we've gone over that horizontal portion. And then we have section two, where we're achieving full potential GDP and full employment. And then we have section three, where we just get a fixed quantity of output. We are employing all of our inputs. We can only get this quantity of outputs. And if aggregate demand is increasing here, we only get an increase in the price level without any increase in real GDP. So we have covered that. So this scenario, there'll be two. Scenario one is looking at the creation and elimination of a recessionary gap in the Keynesian model. And we're gonna be applying some new concepts here that we will see later on. And we will be, under, we will be using uh, the idea of demand side policies. You will see this later in the course. And demand side policies is focused on aggregate demand. This is what Keynesian macroeconomists are really focused on. Uh, they acknowledge that the aggregate supply curve cannot shift. So really everything is dependent on aggregate demand. And that requires government intervention. And with demand side policy, it's this focus on shifting AD to ch achieve certain goals. Um, the three big goals for macroeconomists are achieving, a, uh, achieving price stability, number two, which means that we don't want high levels of inflation and deflation, which in theory is not possible in the Keynesian model. Number two, achieving full employment, And number three, achieving economic growth, steady economic growth. growth. <clears throat> so demand side policies is focusing on shifting AD to achieve these three objectives. All right, so let's begin. So we're gonna have, we will assume that Spain was at full potential GDP before the COVID pandemic. So here we're gonna have aggregate demand going through section two of the Keynesian aggregate supply curve, and we'll call that 81. Aggregate demand curve one, it's intersecting with the Keynesian aggregate supply curve, so it's providing an equilibrium at point A, right, right at this spot, point A. And here we get uh, real GDP, at full potential. So we're gonna say this is income at full potential. And we will remember that Y equals income in economics, which in a closed economy is equal to spending, which is equal to the value of the output being purchased. Okay, so Y is real GDP or income, and we're at full potential GDP. Full potential GDP assumes full employment, right? So at YP, 
we're at full potential. We are fully employing our inputs and we are at full employment. And full employment is the same as the natural rate of unemployment. And the natural rate is equal to, we don't want to forget this, it's equal to one structural unemployment plus number two, frictional unemployment and number three, seasonal unemployment. Okay. So we're at YP, we're at full potential GDP, we have full employment, we're at the natural rate of unemployment. And just to give us an idea, um, each country has a different level of full employment. This is the long run average level of unemployment within a, within a country. The United States approximately has about 5% as their long run average, so that's considered full employment. And let's just say, um, hypothetically speaking, that in Spain it's about 10%, more or less, right? So Spain has about 10% unemployment at full potential, it's considered an acceptable level and everything's going pretty good. Now we need to also draw our price level. Here we see AD with candy and aggregate supply and there's a moderate level of inflation right, right at this point and I'll just call that PL2, right? So where 81 equals the Keynesian aggregate supply curve, it provides an equilibrium level of output at YP and it also provides a price level at PL2, right? So everything's going well. But then the COVID pandemic hits, it spreads. In March, Spain went into lockdown. In October, it is going into lockdown again. Um, society is deeming the right to life, rightfully so, greater than the right to social liberty, but this has consequences on the economy. So aggregate demand, we're gonna remember is equal to real GDP, which is C plus I, consumption spending plus investment spending plus government spending plus exports minus imports. The mandate of requiring people to stay at home and not essential businesses uh, closing would increase um, the level of anxiety among consumers and business owners. So consumer confidence is falling. People are worried whether or not they're gonna be fired or forced to work part-time. Um, investment spending is going down because they're starting to see that they're getting less revenue because people are spending less. So unfortunately, consumption spending due to lower consumer confidence and lower business confidence reduces C and I. So that has the effect of reducing aggregate demand and begins to shift inward. Okay, so here we are entering a recessionary gap, going from 81 to 82. Here we're going to acknowledge that where 82 equals the Keynesian aggregate supply curve, we now have reduced GDP at Y recession. All right, so we're going to call this Y recession. We have entered a recessionary gap, Y recession one. And this is point B right here, this intersection right there. We've noticed that the price level has fallen as well. So price level is at PL1. Okay, there's a fall in the price level. Okay, so um, what options are there for the government? We have a recessionary gap increasing. We have unemployment greater than the natural rate at Y recession. We can also note that unemployment at Y recession is greater than the natural rate of unemployment. We can also acknowledge that Y recession is less than full potential GDP. So uh, we are not meeting these three goals, right? Uh, full employment is not being met. We are not achieving economic growth. Price stability, uh, there's the threat of potentially excessive levels of disinflation, maybe even deflation. So the government has to intervene. How will they do that? 
they're going to do, they're going to utilize something that we call expansionary fiscal or expansionary monetary policy. So let's take a few notes about that. We're going to see this later in the course, but it's it's good to introduce it now since we're looking at the Keynesian model and aggregate demand. So demand side policies can be categorized into two parts. For this lesson, we're just looking at, at expansionary. Expansionary, in this case, fiscal policy. Expansionary fiscal policy. We will look at monetary policy later on in the course. Fiscal policy is concerned with the central government, not the central bank, but the central government. And the central government can control two things. One, it can manipulate government spending. It can increase it or decrease it. And it can control taxes, all right? It can increase or decrease income and corporate taxes. Okay, so since consumption spending is falling due to the COVID pandemic, reduced consumer confidence, reduced business confidence, uh, and we cannot control foreigners, we cannot force foreigners to buy more of our exports, everything really depends on the government intervening, right? This is what Keynesian economists um, promote. And they would state that when we enter a recessionary gap as deep as the one that we're in right now and entering, government spending must increase. So government spending has to go up. How, in what form? Uh, perhaps it's increased government spending providing public health services, right? Public health service spending is beginning to rise. Perhaps the government will employ more uh, nurses. Um, they will buy more medical supplies. So that spending is gonna lead to an increase in government spending, perhaps even they're going to provide more support and services to the education sector so that um, students now are not negatively impacted, which would have a long run impact on the economy in the future. So let's assume that one, public health uh, services spending is going to increase by the government and two, perhaps potentially increased uh, public education spending. Now we're just going to make that assumption. In addition, what will the government do with income and corporate taxes? Uh, Keynes and Accounts would recommend that they lower them. Income tax goes down, corporate taxes goes down. That provides more disposable income for households and businesses to spend. Um, and so that will lead to aggregate demand potentially to increase. So expansionary monetary policy will involve either increased government spending or decreased income and corporate corporate taxes, or a combination of these two things. So aggregate demand begins to shift back out from 82 back to 81. The government spending, um, as uh, medical suppliers are providing more, uh, su more uh, um, supplies to public hospitals, uh, that encourages their businesses, so perhaps potentially we might see some increased investment spending. Uh, as people who are out of work are now employed, uh, temporarily, maybe for the for the government and working temporarily within hospitals and education uh, that can provide them with some, some additional spending. And hopefully over time, consumption and investment spending will, will increase. But for the mo most part, we're just stating that the government spending and reduced taxes leading to 82 shifting out back to 81. 81, we see the price level begin to rise back to PL2. We have achieved full employment at YP. Um, and full potential GDP as well, okay? So that is an example of cre the creation of a recessionary gap and its elimination through a demand side policy, which in this case was expansionary, expanding the AD outward. And that's it, thank you so much and see you next time.